Welcome to Laptop Powerwall, episode 63, Power Shelf Update number 3. Uh, now, just to recap, this is the pack that is made up of lots of four-slot battery holders, and it's basically an experiment to see if this is a crazy idea or not. Um, I've got uh, Tesla-style fuses, um, I've got the cells in groups, like I always do. So there are 12 slots per group, and which means 24 cells, which makes up a 1 kilowatt hour pack. And this is uh, running as part of my larger pack, which is currently at 5 kilowatt hours. Uh, so that's what this is about. And in the previous update, we looked at this, how the groups were... Um, operating after three weeks running without a BMS. I'd been monitoring the group levels, voltage levels, over three weeks without a BMS to see if they drifted apart, if they became unbalanced. And by the three weeks it was clear that these two, um, group one and group two, were definitely lower than all the others. And in my last, last um, update I finished by saying I was going to replace the weakest cells in these two in order to bring it back into balance. But then I just changed my mind and decided that actually it's quite useful to know how long it takes for it to get really badly out of whack. At the moment it's just mildly out of whack, but um, it's really useful to know if, for example, if it takes like two months to get to the point where one of the groups is uh, over 4.1, which would make me nervous, uh, or below 3.2, which would also make me nervous. Um, if it takes two months for that to occur, then I know I should at least manually check, say, once a month, and then I'd know whether um, any of the packs that I'm dealing with, because I've got... Um, I've got this pack, I've a one, got a one kilowatt hour small blocks pack, I've got a, the go-kart pack, and I've got the two kilowatt power wall pack. Um, so assuming that I've got a BMS attached to this, when I get to the point of putting one on, um, I want to know what's the safe time to definitely check manually check all the levels. The BMS that I will attach will have a balancing function, but they never tell you how well the balancing has worked. Generally the, the cheap Chinese BMSs uh, have no LEDs, they either let um, the load operate or they cut it off. It either goes or it doesn't go, that's it, that's all you get to know. Um, so you don't actually know if the balancing is working or not. You, the only way to tell is by manually checking. And it would be nice to know how often is the longest you can go safely um, between manual checks. So that's why I'm going to leave this running. In the meantime, uh, I also went and fed in the capacities into a spreadsheet in order to see if there's any correlation between the capacity values of the various cells and groups, any correlation between those numbers and the results that we were seeing where groups 1 and 2 were running low and the rest were running um, a bit higher. Um, so let's pop over to the spreadsheet and have a look at that. Here we go. On the left hand side we have all the cell pair capacities in milliamp hours uh, for the power shelf and on the right hand side is the same data for the small blocks pack. So they're both one kilowatt hour packs, they both use the same number of cells. And um, so what I've done is at the bottom here Along here, I've got the sum of all the capacities 
within each of the seven groups. And then this is the average of the groups capacities. And then this number here is the divergence from that average. And then down here is the range or spread of capacities within a group. And I have gone through and highlighted the lowest capacity for each group and the highest capacity for each group. Uh, and then over on this column down here, in a stronger colour, I've highlighted the weakest, lowest capacity pair in the whole of the two, two um, packs. And uh, so this is telling some quite interesting stuff. Um, and just to jump back to the actual chart of capacities that we were looking at last week. So groups one and two are these two ones that are drifting low. And if we look over here, groups one and two are the ones with the lowest capacity cells within them. They also happen to contain the highest capacity cells within them. And they have a um, divergence from the average in terms of their total capacity, uh, which is okay. It's not, not the worst by any, any means. Um, so if we go and have a look at group uh, 7 in the power shelf, that's uh, this thick line here, group 7 is the red line that um, hovers along the top with most of the other groups. Um, it has quite a strong divergence from the average capacity for each of the seven groups, um, but it has very little, it has the least amount of divergence of capacities within that group, and it performs quite well. It doesn't perform um, hugely different from the other uh, of the good groups in that pack. So this divergence doesn't seem to be um, a negative factor in the way that performs. And also the, um, the fact that they have a small divergence um, doesn't make it um, perform hugely better than anything else in this. Um, because if you then look at uh, group 6, it diverges a bit less from the average. It has quite a wide range um, within the group, but it still operates quite happily. That's the blue one that is in there. You see it there? That's tripping along quite reasonably. So the range doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, what is really distinctive about these two groups here is they have the single lowest capacity pair of all of the two packs, and uh, certainly within the power shelf, and the next lowest are these two here in group two. So I think those are the ones that are causing these to sag. Uh, the other thing that's in these groups are the strongest uh, capacity pairs within any of the this pack. Um, and there's quite a lot of strong groups, strong um, capacity pairs within this. So it's got uh, a lot of really strong and a lot of really weak capacity. Um, and uh, the range is the highest in the group, but it's not hugely higher than, and especially group uh, 2, the range is 687 versus 641, so that range is not that much different. The, the key difference between group 
two in group six is that this has really low capacity cells. So that um, means my data confirms the conventional wisdom that you should avoid uh, having um, the lowest capacity cells clustered within a group. You should, whatever your weakest cells are, and of course you're going to have whatever range of cells you choose to put in your pack, some of them are going to be the weakest. You should try to spread those weakest cells um, across the whole seven groups and not um, cluster them within one group like I have had done here. Fortunately, because of this, the way this one, the power shop was made, I can um, re reorganize and resort um, all those um, without too much bother. Uh, so that is quite interesting. Uh, the, the other thing to remember, uh, just while we're looking at these these things here, is it's worth remembering, switching over to the small blocks, that it's worth remembering the most dangerous group is not the weakest ones, generally, it's the strongest ones. Um, so in my case, in the small blocks pack, group five is charging really nicely, but that does mean that if anything is going to overcharge, it's going to be this group here, group five. And if we go back and have a look at the data on that group here, we see that the, the divergence is pretty close, um, but the range is pretty high, and within this um, whole pack, I think this is actually the lowest cell, and this is not the highest cell, but it's got, um, and it's also got quite a long, quite a reasonable um, spread. So that's kind of interesting. Um, so it could be that um, when I'm, th if I'm thinking, oh, I need, I should um, swap out one of these um, groups. It would be group five that I would be wanting to swap out, not the low groups, because the way I'm using these packs at the moment, I'm not discharging them very much at all. Um, the greater risk is that I'll be overcharging. Uh, once I've got a bit more um, of my, these packs settled in, um, I'll start discharging them a bit more, using them for more things. Um, but that is all very interesting. It's always good to look at the data and see if you can discern any good intelligence. Um, I hope that has been interesting for you. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Cheers. And here's a little teaser for one of the future episodes coming soon. What do you think that is for? Put your guesses in the comments below. Cheers.